Welcome, everybody. We got a new game for you. This game is a game that I'm betting most of you probably have never heard of, unless there's a few really uber game show nerdy folks like me who love it. This is an old time game, uh, short lived. It actually was a television game show hosted, by the way. Alex Trebek, you may know him from Jeopardy, but actually did this game show way, way back in the day. Um, most of you will know the basic premise of this game. It's called Classic Concentration, and you may be thinking, I'm going to fast forward and skip to another one. Trust me, stick around on this one. This one's tons of fun. You're going to have a great time being able to play this one game. Really a lot about gameplay and finding and sort of uh, – trying to be able to play with puzzles kind of a thing. So I think you're really going to give it a uh, – you'll have a lot of fun if you want to give it a, give it a go. So everybody, welcome to this game called Classic Concentration. Yeah, this is Ryan, the game show guy. The game Classic Concentration, like I said in the beginning, Alex Trebek hosted this thing, which is kind of crazy. But what is it? So – let me just jump into this thing and kind of show you what it looks like. In essence, it's this here. Uh, let me put this into slideshow mode. And you can kind of see what it looks like. The basic premise of the game is that you're going to answer uh, questions. And by answering questions, you're then going to be able to remove uh, squares that uh, reveal a puzzle that will be behind it. The puzzle will be an image that is ultimately um, – a word or a phrase that is going to be broken down into its phonetic pieces. What does this really mean? So, like, the, I put the answer on there. Who are you? That's the answer to the puzzle, but it's not normally there. Anyway, so basically, let me show what it looks like. If somebody answers a question, they get to be able to uh, remove a piece. So let's say, oh, let's get rid of square number two. two. And by clicking on the piece of number two, it then goes away. The, if somebody says, well, I want to be able to reveal what's behind number four, you can click on that. And now I see these things, this owl and this letter, there's these R's. And the more that I click on number six, I see a hand show up. Number one, oh, there we go. And slowly, the more that I click on these things, reveal the picture that's behind it. So the answer is, who are you, is the phrase. And you can see the pictures, then put them together. Uh, this one's very basic in which that it is. the Each sound is the word. Who is a who, R, R, and then the, the finger pointing means you. And so a really simple one. Some of them are going to be more uh, complicated. It's a dangerous word, not dangerous word, but not complicated. But fun, challenging. I like that, challenging uh, and such. So basically, that's the the point of the game is how I can basically uh, have puzzles behind and reveal them. I have created the puzzles for you all. I have 20 plus puzzles for you to be able to uh, pick from. Uh, this game is going to require, it's not quite a, what do we call plug and play, where you get to, uh, you just open it up and start playing it because there's things that you need to do. The things that you need to do, by the way, is the reason I did it this way is that uh, I want you to have choice. The biggest things about, regarding choice is which puzzles that I've created do you feel are appropriate for you to be able to use with your audience? Um I've already done this. This is a new game that I have been developing. Funny story, actually, it's a really, really old game. Way back when I was doing my teaching, uh, I think my first thing I really dabbled with was Jeopardy. The second one that I really played with was um, a, a, a game that didn't really have a name, and I was just playing with fun game elements. And I was teaching like uh, uh, world history, and we were doing ancient stuff. And so I love the idea of uh, we were looking. There were some phrases that stuck out to me, like the eye for an eye. We were talking about um, ancient uh, justice or whatever. And so I love that idea about eye for an eye. And I wanted to. We were talking about Hammurabi's code and all that sort of stuff. And I thought, oh. Um, how can I be able to get this uh, eye for an eye? And it's easy. You have an eyeball and then an ant, four, the number four, ant, eye. And I thought that was really kind of cool. And so I, play, I had some versions of that that I played, and I wanted to put this into one giant game. So I've been spending a lot of time putting this thing together. And it's real basic, the kind of a game. The thing that's taken me most of the time has been the um, – the creating of the puzzles, uh, trying to be able to find phrases that one people may know. And this kind of age group ranges, I would say, if you're fifth, sixth grader up to adult age, you may know these words, terms, phrases. Anything younger than that may be a little bit of a challenge um, and such. So um, keep that in mind. Um, 
And so basically trying to be, I've been trying to be able to think of these different puzzles and these pieces to break them down. Some get more challenging. That was the worst. Let me show you kind of how it looks like here. So here's the opening of the game. Um, and then I have, I've broken it down. So here's the first thing. It's called puzzle boards. So the puzzle boards is I have basically, what I showed you before was just nine pieces, but my puzzles here are all 35 Um a different squares and behind them are these puzzles actually there's nothing behind these as of now because that's the part that you need to do you are you're going to need to be able to put them together um not put them choose which puzzle that you want and um put it behind the puzzle so i had these different puzzles and they're basically just great uh not great they're colored with different ones so here's one puzzle is gray next one blue and green and yellow and so forth and i got about eight of these one two three four five six seven eight eight different puzzles if you want you can make more of them if you want to be able to play more puzzles or less puzzles and basically you got to be able to put your puzzle here and go from there. Well, where are the puzzles? So these are the puzzle boards. Then if I move forward, you're going to start to see I have this thing called the puzzles themselves. And here are the puzzles. So take this one, for example, kind of way to be able to dissect the way the, uh, these words, phrases, and things that I put together. This is what is going to be revealed as pieces get pulled back. Looking at it as is, let me dissect how these kind of work and some of the elements that you'll see. I've broken them down to the sounds. Sometimes it is just the word itself. So like for here, we have Uncle Sam, and it, this is the poster of the classic I want you for the U.S. Army. And uh, it could be a couple different things. It could be Sam. It could be whatever. But notice I have that red arrow. So that's one of these game elements that I've added is arrows that point at things um, to be able to focus on one particular part. So here is focus of you and that's basically it's the standalone word you there's nothing afterwards but like th these two here here i have a red aluminum can and a road sign in between those two is this this plus basically is telling you that um it is two sounds that are joining together to make one word so what could it be it could be red it could be aluminum it could be it should be the most basic thing that it is um and I've, I've tried to be able to come up with images that really sort of um, uh, exemplify what that is. And so that is a can. Okay. And then so it would be can sign. These go together. Can, uh, what is this? Well, that the actual sign itself is a road that tees. So that could be a T. So can plus T, can to, can't. Good. So now I have a, a, a phrase coming together that is you can't. Here's our next one. It's a compound because I see the plus. It says, hey, my, my pronouns are her. The big emphasis on her should tell you that's the sound that we want. And then it's just sometimes I just have, I couldn't find a word for them, so I just put letters in there, sort of big and fancy looking. So here's the letter E for the sound E, her E, her E. And then that's by itself. Those two go together for her E. And then bread. Bread is all by itself. It's not just a bread. And so you would think about, okay, you can't hurry, hurry. You can't hurry bread. You can't hurry bread. Actually, you can't hurry lo loaf, love. And so you can see there's like uh, words that still sound like another one kind of a thing. So, and that in essence is it. You can't hurry love. Now, the way I've designed it is that after the puzzle itself, I have a slide that will have the answer. Now, uh, you don't need this. If you would like to have it on there so you can click and go to the uh, and go to the answer so the kids can be able to see it, your your audience can see it, then um, you can do that. Um, or if you want, you don't even have to have the answers on there. You can just discuss it kind of a thing. All right. So that is that since is it. I got to get this now. If I want to be able to have you can't hurry love or whatever the puzzles are, I need to be able to move this from here to one of the other ones. So let me show you, for example, here. These are all these puzzles that I have. I can keep scrolling. Like I said, I got 20 some, 20 plus puzzles in here. Um, uh, and I'm still, my wife keeps telling me, stop making puzzles because this is what I just enjoy doing right now uh, and putting these things together. But let me show you here. Let me pick a random one. How about um, uh, right here, Washington. Here it is, this one. Um, I have a washing machine and the letter in and all that sort of stuff. So if I want this, what I'm going to do is take, click on the image itself, right click it and copy it. Okay. Now I'm going to then go to my puzzle boards themselves. So here's puzzle board and I'm going to go to the puzzle, the first puzzle that I have, right click and then paste it. Okay. You could see I potentially may need to move the book. 
image around a little bit. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit because if you zoom in a little bit, I don't want it up at that top where it says concentration puzzle. Okay. Um, I don't want, I want that. That is just the, the name of the puzzle and such. And I'm going to show you how you could be able to use that too if you need a little helper. But anyway, so now I have this image. But the problem is, is let's talk about layering. I have my puzzle is, stand, is in front of all of my pieces and this needs to go behind it. So in order to do that, I have to talk about the layering of these objects. And real simple, much like right-click copy, there's a right-click and it says send to back. Once I click send to back, it looks like it's gone. It's not. If you look around the outside, I can see that border that hovers around this, which means it's there. It's just behind all of these squares. And now here's how gameplay works. I put this into slideshow mode, and then you play the game. This is, We're all in game setup. I'll talk to you about how to play the game later. Someone says, I want number nine. So then if you click on nine, this is what I have done. I have created this puzzle uh structure in which that if you click on a square the square disappears and there you have that there and that in essence is it so then you come up with your way or you follow my ways actually follow my ways or come up with, anyway um how are they going to get those off answer questions hey uh, how about i want number 20 i want 32 i want this and as and you can see it starts to slowly reveal itself much more challenging than when you saw you can't hurry love this was a little bit harder i see a washing machine looks like and a and a weight that's a ton i have a, a calendar that says monday there's that poster again maybe with you and gum wash weight mun you gum Hmm, I don't know. Wait a second. You can start to see. Oh, look at this. Wash. It, it, this is an in bed and breakfast. Wash ing ton. Say it together. There's a plus. Washington Mon you. That's mint. Washington Monument. And you'll be surprised about how quickly sometimes uh, your players will answer these. And you'll also be surprised sometimes. How are they not answering this? This is seems very obvious. Anyway, um, based on the players and all that sort of stuff. Hey, here's a heads up, by the way. you got to be careful of this is a game, like so many games, by the way, is that people are going to want to – well, it's not – cheat's not the right word. They're going to want to blurt. They're going to want to be in the back, and it's just human nature to watch a game, particularly when we watch these on TV, to be able to just yell the answers out like, oh, no, it's Washington Monument. If somebody just yells it and they're not actually one of the participants, you're going to ruin the game, that puzzle a little bit. So really preface like, hey, guys, we want to be able to – those who are playing are participating, so let's make a focus on them. So be careful of that. Another thing I wanted for you to be careful of is this. If I click on 18, 18 goes away. If I click anywhere outside 18, normally in a slide, it's going to go to the next slide, which has the answer, which you don't want that to happen because that would ruin the, the puzzle. I have disabled that. So you cannot, if you click anywhere, you hear that click, 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 nothing's going anywhere. So there's only two ways in which you can actually move forward. One of them is you can still use your mouse, right click the mouse, and there's an option up there that comes up, the very first thing that could be next. Or if you have you or somebody work on the computer, you can just hit the forward uh, arrow button and that will move you to the next one. Uh, actually, but I didn't do that because let me show you here. Um, let me go into uh, the slide view. Here is where all my puzzles are. What I would need to be able to do is there is the um, slide for the, uh, the, the, the puzzle itself, and then here's the answer. What I'm going to do is just drag this answer to the spot that is right after where our puzzle was. Our first puzzle board was gray. I'm going to put Washington Monument here, and now let me go back. Let's go here. Notice when you go back, by the way, if you get out of the slide deck, all the – things are gone. So you want to be able to stay within when you're playing on a puzzle. You want to stay on that board. So let's say pretend here and someone's going to do a guess and they think, oh, Washington Monument. Do I click anywhere? Doesn't go. But if I right click next, then has the, um, the reveal that comes up. Hey, everybody, Washington Monument's right. You don't need these, like I said, at all. If you don't want to put them in there, you don't have to. But you can if you would like. And that's what the, where the choice is. And the what I said, it's not plug and play. You're going to have to decide a couple things. 
for, uh, first off, you're going to need to decide which of these puzzles do you want to be able to use? Do you want to do the answers? What order are you going to put them in? How many puzzles are you going to have? The first time you play this, you don't know. It's not like I'm going to play Jeopardy and I'll go, oh, that's five by five. I got 25 questions easy to do. That's what I need to be able to make. This one you don't know. My recommendation is have several puzzles up there because you don't know the speed in which that they're going to go. Um, if you go fast, you're going to need more. Here's another thing, too, is that if you go slow, it's going to get boring. If it's just too long for them to get the answer, what my recommendation is, and I'm, you're going to see this in the, in the directions, is like every two or three puzzles, do one that there's no questions, and it's a fast speed one. And they just start slowly going away. You, may, you pick or have the kids just randomly throw out numbers. One, 27, 19, 14, 5, and then just have them slowly go. And there's no real um, content review kind of a stuff. Got it. So these are all questions that you have and be flexible in this thing. I mentioned before, you can't get out of the slide deck. You only need to stay in the slide deck when I'm on a puzzle. If I need to get out and bounce around, that's fine. It's not like in jeopardy and everything isn't going to get uh, gone or whatever. Okay. So those are the puzzles, uh, that you get to be able to pick from. Um, let's get into gameplay. So if you go to the end and you see the, all those, all of these uh, slides with the yellow background on my directions to you, here's the first one. Just talked about it. <laughs> this is how to set up the game, how to set up the game. Even this part here, like also a fun alternative, use speed rounds. The speed round is super fun where there's no questions involved and you just get uh, and, and you get them yelling at it. All right. So now let's take a look at a way in which that you can be able to play. Um as with all the games, here's the point where I say, make it whatever you want. You be creative and have fun with it, with the uh, the game, the questions and all that. Virtually every game that I make is a review style game. This one is, I, I, I have it here that it can be reviewing your content. It also doesn't have to be at all. You could have review a little bit of content or none. You wanted to be able to do this and have nothing. I'm doing this. I have only a uh, funny story. I've only played this with adults. I played this three times. Um, finally, now in the upcoming weeks, I'm going to be playing this with uh, my classes. And for one of my classes, I'm just going to have it. I got questions, but they're not really content stuff, just fun things about the world in which that we that we do about me about what we've talked about and learned also a little about the room and all that kind of stuff um so that's kind of uh what it can be so you come up with the kind of questions another interesting part is uh that, you, that i've done with this one you can if you'd like to do it the same way in which that i ask a regular standard kind of a question and most of the questions if you've noticed in most games are sort of classic you know test question kind of stuff i'm going to ask you you give me the answer fill in the blank or multiple choice or things like that here's a, well, the way in which that i really like this is sort of a random numbery kind of question that is based on our topic I just keep talking. Let me demonstrate. So here's here's option number one. If I want to be able to do, and I got three different ways in which you can play this. This is the classic way, which you're just going to have a whiteboard, okay? And they're going to write their answers on the whiteboard and then hold them up, kind of a thing. Um, uh, how many? Uh, if I put a question and say, "Hey, everybody, who was uh, the first president of the United States?" and they write their answers down, I make this a speed one. So they write their answers, and then they're going to put their boards flat down. And then I say, "Okay, show me your boards." And everybody who had George Washington are going to get points, but they're also going to get squares. And so whoever came in first on this one, this is a speed one. They get three points, and I would have somebody like all my games up on a whiteboard and have them keep track of the uh, you know three columns or whatever. And keep your score. So they get uh, three points for the question being correct. And more importantly, they get three squares to be revealed. They get to go first and reveal square, square, square. Give them a few, a little bit of time to try to be able to guess the answer. Yeah, nothing. And then the next person. All right. They got Washington Monument. They were in second fastest. So they get two points and two squares. Anybody else afterwards, if you come in third, if you want to play more than that, I usually like three teams would be the best. Um, uh, they get one point in one square, and then they get the the way I do the chance to guess the puzzle is this person goes chance to reveal, then they get a guess to try to uh, get, guess what it is not to reveal but to guess the, to solve the puzzle. Sorry, anyway, and I came up with a ten point. If you are able to guess the puzzle, then you get a bonus ten points. Feel free to change that. You want to make it worth more, um, uh, go for it. Um, and such. I have not done it this way, uh, but this is if you want to use a traditional standard way of answering questions. Um, if you didn't want to make it a speed version, you could just have everybody who gets it gets 
a certain number of points um, and the same number of squares. So let's say hey, if you guys get them all right, everybody who got it right, you can do two points and two squares kind of a thing or something like that. Anyway, that's one way, but I haven't done it that way. This the, I've tried it these two ways. Number this These are number questions. So a, a question being like this. Uh, hey, everybody, I want you to answer how many squares are on a Rubik's Cube. These are questions that nobody really kind of knows for sure kind of a thing. And one, there's two versions of it. One is called who's closest and the other one is higher or lower. In who's closest is going to be this. I'm going to put three teams. I'm going to have them use their whiteboards again. So I'm going to say how many answers on a Rubik's Cube and they're going to get out their pen and they're going to write down their mm, 43. Okay. They don't say that. And the, okay, everybody now show me your boards. They all hold up the, their boards. And then, um, uh, it says here the teams that uh, where it goes uh, teams that reveal their squares based in their ranking were, were get more. So uh, whoever has the highest rank. So let's say first place, uh, whoever was closest, the correct answer was 50. I forget what it was 50 something 54, I think is the right answer. So whoever was closest to that, then you get uh, four reveals and then the next person gets three reveals. And the next person gets two kind of a thing and give them 10 points for each or something like that. Five, not 10 points, but anyway, you can see the answers here. So basically how close you get gives you points and also number of reveals. This one, I've done this once and this was kind of fun. Uh, this one I've done the most though, which is simply just a, um, uh, it was called higher or lower. Same thing. I'm going to do a number question. The number question, how many uh, squares are on a Rubik's cube? This is a speed one. I'm waiting for the first one person to put their hand up. I'm like, okay, yes. Uh, Sally, what do you want? And then Sally's going to go, I think there's 45 on there. Mm, okay. You, great. So 45 is the base. Then you ask the other two players. All right. Do you think that it is higher or lower than what Sally said at 45? And they're going to think about their answers and they're going to say, all right, what do you guys think? And someone's going to, I'm going to go higher. One's going to go lower. They could be the same or different. Doesn't matter. Now, the way I do this is that if the first per, if, uh, if the first person wins, uh, then what they do is so if they go lower, the people go lower than, and if let's say Sally wins, then she gets, since she uh, took the, took the uh, risk about going more then if she gets it right, she gets three squares. And the people who do opposite of her, if they were correct, then they go two squares kind of a thing. So then if somebody gets the puzzle, 10 points. So basically that's, the idea is you're asking questions, and it could be a very uh, a, a variety of these different ways in which you can be able to do that. Come up with your own points, change them. Like I said, I've only done this a few times, so I haven't really got it super dialed in in terms of what I think the best number of points and all this kind of stuff. I will say that the, the higher and lower questions are tons. Of, I've had so much fun. And um, when I mentioned before that are not necessarily uh, content related, like here are some sample questions. If you're going to do something like this, you're going to want to have a fair amount of questions. If you are doing content questions, maybe have some backup fun ones, like what year was Barbie created? And you could have quest answers that they do know, like how many planets in our solar system, give them extra bonus if they're actually to get it, if they, if they get it correctly you know some of them they'll know and some of them are just total random questions you know kind of a thing but this was kind of a really really fun way in which to be able to get a non-traditional kind of question back and forth um and there you go, folks. That's the game. Uh, you just go and get your uh, puzzles. Uh, you put them on. There's a couple different ones. Let me show them. Like first off, like I got this one here. This one actually has three different words here. There's three sports. Uh, and they're, they're layered, sport one, two, and three. And you got, uh, you know, uh, rugby, boxing, and table tennis. Um, but the idea about, let me show you this one here too, is that I have different sort of, I have arrows that point. Also, another things that I have pluses and I, I didn't mention minuses before. So here you can see sort of my Barbie themed one. I have Barbie on here with a plus. So that means these things, two things are going together. But notice down here, there is a minus. That means I'm going to have this chair and then I'm subtracting something. Subtracting, remember, always emphasize, guys, these are sounds, everybody. So subtract the sound. So if I have chair and I subtract, track the air should give me a sound but then i take that ch is all it is and i also still have to add that to something else so chair minus air is ch ch plus ken is ch ken bar b q ch ken barb and ch I'll, I'll tell them too way to be able to is not so slow try to say them fastly barbecue chicken 
barbecue chicken. Oh, there's your answer kind of thing. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Like I said, I've had tons of fun making these things. Um, side note, in this crazy world of artificial AI, artificial intelligence has been helpful with some of my uh, creating some of these things. Like for right here, I really wanted to be able to get uh, this bottom word is trampoline. So like I got a cool picture of Michael Jackson leaning. That was just an image I found. But uh, to try to get a tram, and not everybody knows what a tram or a gondola, like I wanted it to look like, but not a bus. And so I'm like, well, can you? So I had AI make some of these images and literally said things like, put the word tram on it. And it makes them. It's just, it's been kind of crazy. It's been super, super helpful for this game and such. So um, have fun playing with concentration as usual with, with a lot of my games, particularly my new ones. I would love some feedback. You can do feedback on teachers, pay teachers, or, or, or leave a thing about wherever you find this, or just shoot me a message back or leave comments on the YouTube channel or whatever you feel like. And folks, um, I have fun with this thing. would love to get some feedback in as usual. Enjoy your games. This is Concentration, and I am Ryan the Kitchen Guy.